We've done the El Clasico sides, now we're off to Italy in our Football Manager 2020 simulation and it's time to see how our good friends Juventus are doing in the year 2025. Or Zebra as they're known on the game, because of license and rights and the fact they wear black and white stripes, very original. They've got a new name and it's changed their fortunes as Juventus, sorry Zebra, are no longer the dominant force of Italian football. During the simulation they've won just two Serie A titles, the first in 2020 under Maurizio Sarri, who also has a different name weirdly, and the second in 2024 under new boss Thomas Tuchel. The Germans also won a couple of Italian Cups and the all-important Champions League, but Serie A hasn't been as easy as usual. In the 2024-25 season Juventus, sorry Zebra, came second, two points off winners Roma. They ended the season with a 2-1 win over Frosinone, so let's look at who was in the starting 11 on that day and who else is in the squad. In goals, Wojciech Szczesny. The small enthusiast is 35 and still Juve's number one goalkeeper, although it's fair to say he's nowhere near the standard of his predecessor Gianluigi Buffon. Szczesny has been averaging low sevens during the simulation, but has just ended the season with a 6.96. It's atrocious. Buffon wouldn't stand for this. Szczesny has one year left on his huge 300 grand a week contract, with his backup being the hit and miss Mattia Perron, who no doubt forgets how to actually be a goalkeeper considering how little he plays. Right back was Matthias De Ligt. In 2025, Matthias De Ligt is only 25. You'd think he'd be the best central defender in the world. So why oh why is he playing at right back? He's like a tank. I can hardly see him bombing up and down the flank. However, De Ligt has been rock solid based on his averages, a consistent performer who has continued to blossom. And by the looks of things, he hasn't always been right back. As 2024 signing Sergio Roberto who played 30 times in his debut season with a very round score of seven. I wonder if he got a seven in literally every game he played. That'd be pretty impressive. Centre back was Ruben Diaz. A big arrival in January 2023, Juve spent a whopping 83 million quid on Ruben Diaz to take him away from Benfica. It looks like he's been worth it though, a very good central defender who's helped himself to a few assists, which is a little bit weird considering where he plays. Regardless, Diaz is already the event as skipper, which is a testament to his leadership, where he boasts a rating of 17. He was alongside Christian Romero. This is where things seem to have slightly gone wrong for Juventus, as it doesn't seem like Christian Romero is particularly good. He's been in and out of the team since he joined in 2019. He's just a backup who really has actually played far too often. De Ligt is obviously Diaz's main partner, but the lack of credible backup must be a real issue for Thomas Tuchel, especially since Leonardo Bonucci left in 2024 for the riches of China. Left back was Nicolas Tagliafico. This is a classic event of signing. Tagliafico is 32 now, but has only just completed his first season in Italy, having arrived in the summer of 2024 for £29 million from Man United. And he had a solid first season down the left, although it doesn't look like he was a massively creative force. Juventus' backup left back is Rejan Ethan Klein, who may or may not be the son of fashion designer Calvin Klein. Centre midfielder was Matteo Kovacic. Juventus appeared to have had a revamp in recent years, as their three centre midfield options all signed for the club in the summer of 2023. The first one we're looking at is Matteo Kovacic, a £59 million arrival from PSG. The Croatian midfielder has had two average seasons in Turin, but you'd expect better from a Juventus midfielder. You wouldn't have Perlo getting lower sevens, would you? In fact, there aren't actually many Italians in this team. There were none in the starting eleven, and the biggest Italian name is Marco Verratti, who was actually just on the transfer list with an asking price of a lowly £6.5 million. Kovacic was alongside Fabian. A £66 million signing from Chelsea in 2023, Fabian knows Serie A well, as in the real world he's currently a Napoli player. But in FM he's enjoyed a mixed start of life in Turin, and it's clear that the Sports Interact crew don't rate the Spanish midfielder as highly as the FIFA crew do. I'm sure he gets up to like a 90 or something on that game. I'm surprised at how poor Juventus' centre midfield options actually are. It's an area that they're normally stacked in. They've still got Adrian Rabio, kind of, although he's on loan at Leicester of all clubs. On the right of attack is Hakim Ziyech. Christ, this is practically a new team. Hakim Ziyech only arrived in 2024, costing 30 million quid from Chelsea. His time there was alright, and at Juventus I think he might just be there because of his versatility, capable of playing anywhere in attack and a little bit deeper. His first season was okay, although I think Juve's main right winger is a man called Mo Salah, who arrived in 2024 as well for 53 million quid from Real Madrid. The Egyptian king is still a superstar in the game, I mean just look at his numbers throughout his career, sensational, so why on earth wasn't he actually starting for Juventus in this game? In attacking midfield was Paolo Diabala. The Argentinian attacker has long been linked with the Juventus exit, but he's still one of their main men in 2025 and looks like their best player throughout the simulation. 
he's constantly getting double figures, just netting the 19 in the most recent Serie A campaign, while his best tally is 21 from the season before. He's the only player on more than 300 grand a week, taking home a cool £325,000 a week, which I guess is enough to get by on. On the left of attack with Jadon Sancho. A goal scorer on the day and another superstar on the event is attack, it's clearly not the forwards who are letting the Italian giants down. Surprisingly, Sancho didn't even cost more than 100 million quid, arriving for a relatively cheap 83 million pounds, signing from Chelsea in 2022. I know 83 million pounds isn't cheap, but for a player like Sancho, it's kind of a bargain. He's had three excellent seasons in black and white, and will likely have even more considering he's only 25 years old on the game. Juventus also have another impressive young winger, Dutchman Calvin Stengs, who we certainly want to watch in the coming years in the real world. And up front was Jose Luis Costa. We end this video with our one and only regen, the Argentinian striker Jose Luis Costa. He's 22, valued at £25 million, and has so far scored 14 Serie A goals in 40 appearances. His average rating's alright, but the fact he's wanted by Celta Vigo and Espanyol suggests he maybe isn't the future of Juventus' attack. To be fair, Ronaldo isn't long retired, hanging up his boots in 2024 after six hugely impressive years in Italy. Even at 40, he'd probably do a better job than this regen. So that's Juventus, sorry Zebra, in 2025 according to Football Manager 2020. Let us know who you want to see done next in the comments below. As always, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to Alexpo and until next time, we'll see you around.